to you, our viewing audience. Thank you so much for tuning in us to us today. We're so glad you've done that. And we're honored that you're gonna be with us today. We have a great, great show for you. Yes. But in the meantime, before we start that, we ask that you grab a pencil, your pen, paper, and perhaps even your Bible. At the end of our show, we'll show you our email, our mailing address, our telephone number, and even our fax number. We welcome all your comments, your suggestions, your prayer requests, anything that you think we should know or you are interested in, we'll be glad to answer it for you, lift it up in prayer to the Lord. At this time, we would like to thank our bishop, Bishop Charles E. Blake and his lovely wife, Sister May L. Blake, and our entire West Andalus family. Thank you for letting us do this. And at this time, uh, to introduce this great, great show we're going to have, I'd like to introduce to you now Dr. Tanya Lewis. Amen. Dr. Lewis. Thank you. Yes. Sister Amen. Rosalia Stewart, yes. I appreciate you. And certainly, yes. my, my, I'm just so honored to be yes. with all of you. Amen. Uh, yes. Starting here with Rochelle Collins, mm -hmm. James Vaughn, Charles Brown, and also Gail Leonard. And yes. so we welcome you because to you, our audience, we will be doing, uh, discussing this, the topic today, experiencing prison life. And uh, we want to go behind the screen and behind the uh, wall and behind the veil and see exactly what prison life is all about. We want to it, this, this show to be a deterrent to those who may be headed towards prison and also to know just how real it is uh, of life behind the prison walls. And so without any further ado, I would like to hear from our guests and uh, as they share and give us enlightenment on experiencing prison life. Uh, to any one of you, what age did you begin to interact with law enforcement? I started at uh, 24 years old. Mm. 24? Uh, yeah, and it escalated at like 35. Oh. I really started getting into a lot of trouble. So like for and 11 years? Every time the police saw me, they arrested me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Charles? I started about 25 because uh, I wasn't uh, informed until I started interacting with criminals, and that's when uh, I uh, got more familiar with going to jail. So around 25 yeah. is when you became active? Okay. Yeah. What about you, James? I started at the age of seven. Okay, seven. You know, I have, was um, one of the oldest kids in the house. Okay. And so I didn't have no big brothers, so I started hanging with people out in the street, okay. imitating what they was doing. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just escalated. Okay, from the age of seven. It, 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 that, that speaks that we need to be good examples of those who are following after yes. us and not be bad examples because they are the ones, their, their actions uh, demonstrated and dictated your actions, you know, and so even though you, we, had cho we have choices, but still uh, it's just a call to us to be the very best that we can do, be yeah. in examples yeah. to other people. What about you, Rochelle? I started uh, right after high school, around 17 years oh, okay. old. Okay, around 17 mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. Okay. Got caught up in the lifestyle. Mm. What, what, what would you say was the, uh, uh, what, what got your attention? Was it money? Was it, I mean, fame? Was it power? What do you think drew you to the lifestyle that you chose, um, Rochelle? I basically come from a, a, a very good family. It was just peer pressure, peer okay. influence, um, just believing the lie. Mm -hmm. that we could have some fun mm -hmm. and it would always be fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Father, that was a lie. A uh, big lie. Yeah. Yeah. It was a big yeah. lie. Mm -hmm. Big lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, well, for me it was, I mean, once I started having brothers and sisters, my father, you know, there wasn't, wasn't that much money no more. Right. So, 
You know, I used to I started out hustling bottles and mowing lawns and everything else, but I got to see other people having bigger money. Big money, uh -huh. So I started wanting. wanting to have big money. Right. You know what I mean? But I had a mother that was always there for me for the sports, but as my father, he was, you know, he was all busy working. So when everybody got born, it was just like I was left out. Okay. And so I went to people in the streets. To, you, found, you, you went for an association someplace, a place to belong. Yes. Someplace, and you found that in the street. How long were you incarcerated, Gail? Um, a total of 22 months. 22 months? Yeah, I did 19 months in prison. Okay. Yeah, uh, there was a small, it was a, I spent my time in a private prison though. Oh, okay. Live Oak, and it's like a population of 250 people. Oh, okay. So okay. it wasn't um, as hardcore as the bigger prisons. Okay. Yeah. What, about, what about you, Charles? How long were you incarcerated? I was incarcerated seven years. Seven years. Yeah. And where were you incarcerated? Uh, Sin Sin. That's okay. New York. Okay. And um, they've transferred for you uh, when you do half time there, but you have to put in full transfer. And they won't know the reason why. And they look at your record and uh, your you know, MOS and the prison, what was you all about? to order to get that when you go before the board. Okay, so seven years in Sing Sing. Yeah. Okay, what about you, James? I did about 20 years in prison. Okay, okay. In and out during terms. Okay, and where, where did you spend your time? Well, I started at the northern part of California at Susanville. Okay. Worked my way down to the southern. <laughs> Work your way down. Worked, worked the southern okay. down to San Diego and then all the way to the borderline of Nevada. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So I'd, I'd been to 11 prisons. Okay. 11 different prisons. Wow. You really have a history that you could really share. And, um, all right. What about you, Rochelle? Um, I eventually, well, in the beginning, I made it to Silver Brand. Mm -hmm. But I've always done things really large, so I made it to uh, Terminal Island Federal Penitentiary, mm -hmm. where I was sentenced to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I appealed the case and did a period of probably three years. Okay. Total. Gail, I know you said your population was like about 250. Yeah. What were the, your other populations? Just uh, Charles, what was your population? 5,000. 5,000. Yes. 5,000. Mm -hmm. 5,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, and James, just about what may have been your population, your greatest population? Uh, anywhere from 5,000 to 7,500. Wow. One place. Mm -hmm. What about you, Rochelle? I would think about 15 to 2,500. And as I uh, shared with you before, this is near and dear to my heart because, of course, none of us that live on planet Earth are separated from some, knowing someone or having a loved one. Yeah, right. And like I indicated to you, I have a loved one that was incarcerated. And, uh, and so this is near and dear to my heart, but I, I'm celebrating the fact that you have experienced it but now you've gone on mm -hmm. to greater ground and greener grounds. Uh, let me ask you this. Was prison life anything that you imagined? Prison life, anything that you imagined? Um, well, it, my, my experience was um, a lot better than what I imagined. Okay. Uh, but prison, uh, what you see on TV is mm -hmm. nothing like uh, the reality. Is better or is worse? Uh, it's worse. Uh, well. I don't know, that's kind of a hard question because they try to portray, portray prison on TV as really being uh, really bad, but I don't think it's quite that bad. Okay. I, I don't know, it's a hard question. Okay, I know you were in a private yeah. prison. Yeah. Right. Um, what would be your comments, either one of your yeah. three? In, in my situation, it was bad. Mm. It was degrading, humiliating. You know I mean, you always had to watch your back, you know. Mm -hmm. You, you could never really do nothing. I mean, whatever program they started, they took away. Mm. You know what I mean? To be sitting there, they work you for 13 cents an hour. Mm. Wow. You know what I mean? They tell you when they go to bed, when they get up, mm -hmm. what you can have, who can see you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was, it was bad. Right, right. Nothing for anyone to really want to go to. No, mm -hmm. I, never, I, never, I never thought about going to prison. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even after I went the first couple of times. I never knew what I went for, mm -hmm. but I had to deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I don't want to go back no more. Praise God. Praise God. Well, look mm -hmm. at you. You're looking good, James. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you. We're so proud of you. And a lot of uh, separation in there too. Don't they separate you by well, some groups? Well, in, in, in certain certain prisons, like when I was in Quentin, yeah, they separate the blacks and Hispanics over here. 
and then they have the blacks on the yard by the cell. Mm. You know what I mean? So basically, when, once you go in, if you, if you knew somebody in the streets, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever race he was, you can't talk to him inside there. Okay. Because you a white, you can't talk, black can't talk to a white. Okay. You know what I mean? Otherwise, it's peer pressure. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If, unless you transact in business, mm -hmm. then on you can talk to them. On behalf yeah. of the group. Yeah, you know, deals going on mm -hmm. and gambling or whatever. Oh. But as far as personal level, no, there's no personal level in there. Okay. And mm -hmm. I know you sort of referenced what prison life was all, was all about, but uh, from any others or even from you, what else would you have? How would you describe prison life? What, what, how would you describe it? Uh, I would say it's another world in, in a world. Mm. And how, however you are, or whatever you claim to be, mm -hmm. what you are, you 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 make an adjustment to find out if you are really that, mm -hmm. and whatever you pertain to, you'll come to one conclusion that I'm not that uh, I, I thought I was, and you become all mixed up. Mm. Okay, then when you become all mixed up, you come, you become open-minded to learn from the pro professional criminals there. Mm. But if your mind is not tuned to that way, but God is to go in the right path, mm -hmm. you become stale, and you quit growing, and, and you go into yourself until you meet somebody else like you. Going into yourself, whatever way you are, you meet someone the same way, but you don't know who they are until you uh, feel the liberty uh, of the prison. In the words, you start learning how to do time. Oh, okay. Then uh, how to pass you start the time. Really learn how to really learn learn how to deal with yourself. Mm -hmm. Learn how to deal with yourself, spirit. Learn what to do. Learn how to ease your nerve. Learn how not to think. Learn, uh, you know, I mean, you know, not not quit thinking, but learn what not to think about so much. Then you then you learn the arts of of things that what to do, not to do from the old timers there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. else? I mean, will you have you have any other comments? You yeah. learn how to pray. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have, you once you're in there, you learn how strong you really are. Okay. Because there's so many pressures in there. I mean, you might want to, you know, if you want to go to religious services, you know what I mean. You stick with religious services. Okay. There's like a, a written law. Okay. They leave you alone. Okay. Okay, but now if you want to go into the the gang tip. Okay. Then you're always in problems. Okay. If you want to go to school. They let you go to school. Those that have it in the programs. Okay. You know what I mean. You basically learn how much of a man you are on your own. Okay. You know, if you need people to follow you, you can go in there as an innocent person and not know nothing. Mm -hmm. And prison can make you more harder than you went in. Mm -hmm. You can go in as a hard person and come out and be an innocent person. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it gives you it gives you time, but you still have it, it teaches you how to be your own man okay. in there. Okay. You have you have decisions to make on your own life in there. Okay. It's a, it's a whether you want to do them or not. Okay. All right. That's from the male perspective and also I know you said it makes you pray. Yes. Um, the facility that I did my prison term, there were men and women. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. The women were on one side and the men were on the other. And, um, Separated by a fence or something? Right. We ate together and we went to oh. school together. Oh. Uh, federal prison is a little bit different than state. Oh, okay. Uh, at that time. Okay. The women appeared to be a little bit more agitated, I guess, because they couldn't get to the men like they wanted to. <laughs> but um, you they, <laughs> they were. They were very agitated. In I fact, mm -hmm. they set the building on fire. There was a... Uh, oh. A uh, cement building that I resided in, because I didn't have a drug-related crime. Okay. But the girls who lived in the wooden buildings were all drug-related. Okay. They had a problem with their building, so they locked the doors, locked all the inmates inside the building, and set it on fire. Now wait a minute. Who who did that? The inmates. The or? inmates. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the guys had to come over and help put it out. But after that, I got out of prison, and they shipped all the women from Terminal Island. Oh, okay. So they're no longer there. Oh, okay. So now just male populated. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Were any of the rest of you in a co-ed kind um, of? No, mine was in co-ed, but um, uh, it was real touchy living with a bunch of women. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, I more or less wanted to stay to myself because. You get into a fight and then you get more time added on, mm. you know, get into arguments and then they'll ship you out to a, to the regular state prison. So, you know, it was, it was, um, it was kind of lonely, you know, it was lonesome and, but, you know, I, I learned, I just read a lot and um, more or less stayed to myself. I had a few friends, but not really what you would call friends, you know, mm -hmm. just girls that you talk to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. So would, uh, so is private prison like a warning that this is where you go first and then if you don't turn around you go to all? Well, first I went to Chowtilla. I spent uh, three months there. Okay. And Chowtilla they have what you call going over the wall. Okay. Which is, um, they have, well they have the reception yard and then they have going over the wall. If you're going to stay there, you spend your first three months in the reception yard. Okay. So that's the yard I was on and that was kind of a taste of real prison. Okay. But it wasn't really um, what it was all about. And then uh, where I spent prison time, I was blessed. It was like a camp, mm -hmm. you know, so it was like a uh, going to camp, okay. you know, so, <laughs> you know, everybody had a job. Everybody had something to do. Okay. You know. Okay. Uh, what was your experience with family and friends during this time when you were in and out experiencing yeah. incarceration? Did you blame family any time? No. <laughs> no, I know. No. You got you there. Mm -hmm. ha. Um, my family was very supportive. I felt bad that I inconvenienced them. Mm -hmm. um, I thank God for a praying mother, mm. you know, for my protection. Prison can be very dangerous. Mm. Yeah. Just took it one day at a time, just try to stay out of trouble. Amen. Stay in a book. All right. <laughs> Amen. All right. What were your experience with family? Well, my first, my first experience uh, when I went to the pen the first time, and I was in the shoe in Quentin in the hole, and I knew I was in a whole different environment. Okay. Straight. I mean, I was in straight violence, so I, I didn't have time to look at family and friend. And my mother would come up there on the bus. Mm. And, you know, and I had an experience once in the visiting room where it was supposed to be a racial ride in the, in the visiting room, and my mother's there, you know what I mean? Mm. But I knew if I didn't get out, she was, so I just told her, don't come no more. Oh, okay. Because I'm putting you in a spot, mm -hmm. and I'm putting myself in a spot. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so when I started doing time, I put myself there. Mm -hmm. So I deal with the little 13 cents an hour, so I had little hustles, you know what I mean, right. that I deal with. I mean, I could call them. Well, I couldn't call my mother. She told me I had to write if it wasn't but two lines. <laughs> you know what I mean? She'd tell me, first thing she'd tell me, say, get the Bible, read the Bible, mm -hmm. write me, mm -hmm. and I'll send it. Mm -hmm. If you don't write me, don't call me. <laughs> but other than that, I basically did all, I mean, they was there if I needed them. Right. But I put myself there, mm -hmm. so I had to learn. I might be here for life, so I had to learn to survive on myself. Mm -hmm. What about your fi family or friends? Either one of you, Charles or I was, I was a very, very introvert. Okay. Uh, how, how I wind up in prison, uh, I left California in 65, and I, I lived in New York for 20 years. Then my family didn't know anything about me. Oh, okay. Because uh, I had hostility towards my family, so when I went to prison, uh, I really didn't want them to know what was up with me. Okay. And uh, so I found I found friends, somebody like me in prison. Okay. Like I said, you okay. can always find your match. Mm -hmm. So that's constellated me. So I went on and grew from from that stage in other areas to uh, mix with the loneliness to tried to soothe my thoughts about that and I found out all experience about that and it's not too good a thing to be okay. by yourself. Well we certainly uh, <laughs> discourage any family member of separating yourself uh, for 20 years. I can't even imagine not knowing what my family, what my sons are. Uh, no matter what you do, no matter where you go in life, uh, 
family usually for the most part yeah. still love you and still yeah. want to be there their right. family mm -hmm. their friends mm -hmm. and so uh, don't double punish those who love you yes. by by disappearing because we all have situations that we must rise up right. out of the dust from and so right. Uh, right. don't don't deprive us of loving you okay. let me ask you this what's your current status you're not in prison now what's your current status <laughs> James what's your current status <laughs> look at that beautiful <laughs> smile <laughs> Well, my current status is thanks partly to part of the Rochelle, Rochelle Collins, uh -huh. you know what I mean, trying to help me change part of my manner okay. and anger and stuff and stuff and start dealing with pro uh, problems. Okay. You know, um, I work at a treatment center, one of the biggest in the oh, state wow. nation, mm. the Phoenix House. Mm. You know me after going through the program for dual diagnostics, and uh, you know. I finally gave back the C number Pray. after 20 years. Uh -huh. C no okay, yeah. C number. Well, well, my prison number. Okay. The prison number I have for 20 years. Okay. I finally gave it up. Okay, okay. You know, and I'm trying, I'm slowly but surely trying to get back into the community. Great. You know what I mean? I'm not so much trying to tell people what to do. I'm just trying to show them I've been through it so long. Mm -hmm. Those who knew me that have been through it so long, you know what I mean? Instead of telling them I'm just walking what I preach. Oh, okay. Instead of talking it. I'm walking it that That's way. Right. They can see me. If it can change me, it can change anybody. Hello. Yeah. They can't argue with that. No, they can't argue with it. How long have you been out? Well, I've been out almost three years. Oh, praise God! <laughs> praise Amen. God for Amen. that! Amen. Praise Amen. God for that! Amen. What's your current status, Gail? Uh, well, I also want to thank Rochelle because oh, um, oh my, she's it's teaching that. me how to be a Christian. All right, okay. Rochelle. So, um, and um, I live at the Cannon House okay. and. I d was doing some case management with um, with a homeless shelter. Okay. And um, I'm just trying to be obedient <laughs> and you know stay with the Lord. How long have you been? Amen. I've been free for uh, one year and seven. Oh, um, Amen. About a year and a month, That's something great. like that. Yeah. And you look good. And I'm due to get off uh, parole on the 17th of this month. Amen. 17? Oh, yeah, my goodness. seven days. Oh, oh, yeah. oh I am rejoicing with you. No wonder you're smiling. You yeah. shouldn't yeah. be smiling. Yeah. Smiling for life, okay? Yeah. Give the number yeah. back. Oh, yes. yeah. oh, that's what you mean by that, give the number back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have yes. that number oh. and you stay on you until you do. Oh, okay, well, until you got parole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, went, I went in in February, February 25th, 1984. They gave me the C number, and it took me to 2003. Praise to give it back. Give it back Praise to them. Huh? To give it back. But you gave it back. I gave it back with a, um, believe me, there was a lot of obstacles trying to get it, yeah. give them that number back because right. they didn't want me to give it back mm. because how much uh, problems I was to them. Uh huh. But hey, I went through every <laughs> obstacle they gave me. <laughs> I had to give it back. Hey, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It's the alphabets. So the C number is a very old number. Oh, they go okay. down the alphabets A. B, C. So what are they on now? I believe they're on T now, aren't they? Whoa, okay. This is 2004. Oh, okay. But women is on W. They're all wow. W. Yeah. Oh, really? wow, okay. It's okay. W number, yeah. Okay, I didn't know, I didn't know that. Yeah. Thank you for, mm -hmm. for that enlightenment. Let me ask, mm -hmm. let me just ask you, because we are down to the last few minutes of the show. Uh, what would be your comments to viewers who are being warned, you know, those children or people who are, you can't tell them anything and uh, this won't happen to them, what would you say to them? James, what would you say to the viewers who won't listen to anybody else who's headed down the same road? Well, I was hard-headed. Okay. I learned the hard way. Mm. You know what I mean? You can't beat them, you can't beat them laws. Okay. You know what I mean? If, you, if you're going you're gonna to humble yourself, if you don't, if you take a five dollars sixty-five cents an hour job, mm -hmm. that's better than working for nothing, work for thirteen cents an hour. All right. And all the humiliation yeah. they go through in there, right. yes. you're not gonna learn nothing. If you get any type of training, start. You gotta listen to your mother and father now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they know best. There's a lot of other people that know best that haven't been there. Whatever, whatever they're doing, works for them to keep them out of there. Them the ones you need to follow. Mm -hmm. Them hard heads that keep you in the streets, mm -hmm. in trouble. You need to leave them alone. Mm. You need to find better, bigger and better friends. Mm. Mm. I'm tying down my sons and making them look at this tape. Hello. Hey. Hey. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is for us. Yeah. What would you say, uh, Charles? What would you say? I used to be afraid to say it. I said, find God, get saved, give him your heart, repent, mm. and learn the Bible or what he said about going to heaven or hell. 
how to save your soul, and then marrying, have your job, go to church, <laughs> pay your tithes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Rochelle, for those persons who are incarcerated, what would you say to them? Um, I would say educate yourself. Pick up a book. I would hope and believe that it will be the Holy Bible. God's words are life. Mm -hmm. He says that he's come to give us life and mm -hmm. give it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And that's a promise. Mm -hmm. He also said, lean not to your own understanding, mm -hmm. but acknowledge him in all your ways, mm -hmm. and he will direct your path, mm -hmm. even in prison. Even, even he's in prison. everywhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. I thank God for uh, my church. Mm -hmm. I thank God for you. Uh -huh. Thank God for you. Um, because just as they say, have said that I have taught them, you all have taught me mm -hmm. how to be a Christian. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, and that's what we have to do. We have to educate mm -hmm. the people that are in prison. Mm -hmm. We have to educate the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I refuse to employ another judge. Mm. I'm just, you know, I just, All right. we've given a lot of people All jobs. Right. All right. I All just, right. you know, I want them to call me <laughs> to, to help them. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to. You don't keep them with the job. Right. Well, I don't want to keep them with the job. All I right. want them to hire me All right. to help them. That sounds like a winner. So um, we can use the negative and flip it and, and use it for positive. Oh, yeah. Gail, thank you, mm -hmm. Gail. Uh, in the last, in the last seconds of the show, what would you say to family and friends who have people incarcerated? Um, well, give them support, um, pray for them, and um, stay in touch with them. Stay in touch. Stay in touch. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Rochelle. Would you just whisper mm -hmm. a quick prayer for our audience, please? Father God, we come before you humbly in the name of Jesus, yes, giving you thanksgiving and, giving and praise for who you are, Father God. Yes. Father God, there's somebody that's incarcerated crying out to you. Yes. Abba, please help me. Yes. Father God, look upon them right now, Father yes. God. Yes. Father God, I pray for the family member yes. that has to be inconvenienced. Yes. I pray that you strengthen them, Father strengthen God. Them, Father God, we thank you for your mercies yes. and your grace. Yes. Father God, you said you came to heal the sick and you yes. came for the weak. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we'll look to the hills where it's come with our help, Father God. Yes. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. We love you and we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus amen. Name. Amen. 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 We certainly say praise God to you, our audience, amen. and uh, just know again that our prayers are with you. If you are experiencing prison life, it's not too late. Your life can change. If you have people incarcerated, continue to love them and reach out and stay in touch. Amen. And until amen. next time, God's blessings upon you. We love you. Love you. Love amen. you so very much. Amen.